Enthusiasts or buyer, cars or bikes, all you need from the auto world is right here on the Autocar India channel. Subscribe now. The new Audi A4, it was launched back in September 2016 and when we drove it back then, we came back mighty impressed. Apart from one thing, the engine. You see, it was launched with just one petrol engine, a 1.4 at that, so while performance was adequate, you couldn't call it ample. So like everybody else, we've been anticipating this new diesel version and now that it's finally here, it has to stand trial against its two German rivals, the BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes C-Class. Now this is a grudge match that has been decades in the making and we are more than happy to settle it one more time. Now, styling is clearly a matter of preference and over the years, we've found people who've taken a shine to all of these three. The business suit-like minimalism of the Audi, the old-school elegance of the Mercedes or the hunkered-down sportiness of the BMW. Those typical family characteristics return in these latest versions, so you take your pick. Where it's a bit easier to be objective is on the inside, so let's take a look. The A4 dons the theme set forth by the Q7 and though its design may be restrained, it just reeks of quality. The dashboard has a horizontal theme with a continuous aircon vent and the rich looking slab of wood beneath it. The metal spokes in the steering wheel, the virtual cockpit digital dials and the haptic control buttons all make it feel very high tech. There's nothing that can match the C-Class cabin for sheer wow factor though. Flowing slabs of polished wood, brushed metal and large expanses of leather abound. In terms of design, it's the opposite of the A4, more traditional than modern. It's hard to fault the Merc's build quality in isolation and it's only alongside the new A4 that it falls a little bit short. The 3 Series is the oldest of this trio and that shows in the design of the cabin. It feels solidly built but you won't get that last degree of finesse that you do in the other two. Like the outside, the interior has a sporty bent with the dash curved a bit towards the driver and a chunky steering wheel. And despite the car being the oldest, the 3 Series has the slickest, easiest to use infotainment unit. The Audi comes a close second and has the advantage of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, while the software in the C-Class infotainment feels the clunkiest and the screen also feels too small. And now here's a quick look at how these cars compare on equipment. They may be compact and sporty, but they are still luxury sedans at the end of the day. So let's move into the backseat to see which is best, starting with the Audi. Now Audi has done a remarkable job of improving this backseat of the new A4 from the old A4. Um, it's a lot more spacious, a lot more comfortable than before and there's even good thigh support from this seat squab. The backrest might be a little too upright for some, but honestly, once you get in and are moving, you won't notice this at all because the seat is just so comfortable. And while on the topic of comfort, they have really, really nailed the suspension on the new A4. It's comfortable at low speeds to medium speeds and it really smothers out just about every kind of bump and undulation the road can throw at you. It's only when you get to higher speeds that things start to get a bit too floaty and wallowy. And yes, that can be a problem if you drive on the highway a lot, but again, it's not something you can't get used to. Now, step into the back seat of the C-Class and first impressions are very, very good. I mean, you're surrounded by thick slabs of wood, lovely metal switches, double-stitched perforated leather. It's all very, very nice. But stay a little while longer and you start to notice the shortcomings. The second sunroof, for instance, it has a very thick frame and that sort of eats into the headroom. Additionally, the back seat, though quite comfortable in its own right, uh, does have a very, very short squab. So that means thigh support is really not that good and you wouldn't expect that in a 45 lakh car. And when it comes to the ride, I'm afraid the news isn't all that great either. Mercedes has had to stiffen up the suspension when they raised the ride height for India and the result is a ride that's a bit too choppy and firm over sharp bumps at low speeds. The upshot is that on the highway, provided the road is smooth, it stays really flat and really composed. So you don't get tossed around or floated around as you do with the Audi. 
Now the first issue with the BMW's back seat, you notice the moment you open the door, the seats are placed really low down and you have to climb over the sort of wheel arch over here to get into the cabin. That means ingress and egress is a bit of a task, but again, once you sit inside, you realize just how comfortable it is. They've managed this by using the length of the car to maximize space rather than the height. It's quite clever. As for the ride department, well, BMW always managed to nail a good ride and handling balance. Well, the handling, I'll tell you in a minute, but the ride is really, really rather good. It does thunk through some sharper bumps, but overall it is still a rather softly set up car that handles low speed bumps well, though I suspect not quite as good as the Audi. Now, before we get moving, let's take a quick look at how these three compared in our acceleration tests. And it's quite close. Interestingly, despite the A4's quick new dual clutch gearbox and the Merc's power advantage, it's the BMW that's the quickest. And that's likely helped by the fact that it's over 100 kilos lighter than the other two. It gets to 100 kph in 7.83 seconds, neck and neck with the Merc's 7.89 seconds, with the A4 not too far behind with 8.08 .08 seconds and things are similarly close in kickdown or roll-on acceleration. And with that, it's on to the driver's seat and let's start with the A4. Unlike with the petrol, there's no downsizing here. You once again get a 2-litre diesel, but there's more power now and instead of the CVT gearbox, you now get a dual clutch unit. Now the performance is all really there, it's really quite a quick car, but that's not the first thing you'll notice. What you will notice is the sound. Did you notice it? Because I didn't. It is so refined in this car. Everything is so quiet. You don't hear the road, you don't hear the wind, and you certainly do not hear the engine. It's when you start to hurry the new A4 diesel that it starts to show its flaws just a little bit. For instance, if you slam your foot really hard down, there is a hesitation before the power comes in. So power delivery isn't quite as smooth as the BMW or the Mercedes when you're really going for it. But if you're driving in a relaxed manner, it's absolutely fine. And that's just as well because the dynamics of this car also lend themselves rather well to driving in a relaxed manner. Uh, this is not a car that wants to dive into corners. The steering uh, is light, it weighs up nicely when you put it in dynamic mode and when you go faster, but ultimately it really doesn't offer a lot of feedback and it likes to be steered quite gently. The truth is, for most customers, this sort of handling from the A4 is just fine. Sure, you can't push it quite as hard as you can the other two, but I doubt most customers will. On to the Mercedes, and the one we've brought along is the C250D, not the C220D. And while it costs about 5 lakhs more, it gets more power and torque and the newer, quicker 9-speed automatic gearbox. So it's got the big numbers, but does that make it the best to drive? Now really, it's the powertrain that is worth the extra money because this engine and gearbox work together so, so well. There's almost no lag because the gearbox just appears to shift its way around it. The thing about the engine though, is that that torque comes in one constant surge. There's no lag, there's no sudden punch. It just goes from start to red line in a constant wave. So it's got the strong powertrain, but as we've seen in the Audi, that doesn't necessarily make it good to drive, right? So yes, the C-Class is a bit stiffly sprung, but that has its advantages in the corners. Because it's so stiff, body control is really good and it doesn't roll as much as you think a Mercedes would. What really helps that is the steering, which is quick and very, very sharp. So it really makes the nose want to dart into corners with just the slightest prod of the steering wheel. Yes, the Beamer is ultimately a little bit more fun, but really this comes as quite a pleasant surprise that I am actually having quite a good time chucking the C-Class around corners right now. So the C-Class is surprisingly good, but historically it's always been the BMW that's the best to drive. You see, they call BMWs the ultimate driving machine for a reason, and frankly, it's something you can't really put your finger on. And 
this three series is the perfect example of that. The moment you get in and start driving, you think, this can't be an ultimate driving machine. It's soft, the steering is light, it's very comfortable, it's a proper luxury car. But get the modes and the settings just right, the steering weighs up really nicely and push a little harder and you'll know exactly what I mean. And this isn't an M3, this is a 2.0-litre diesel that I'm talking about. And speaking of the 2.0-litre diesel engine, it's a new engine that BMW introduced with the facelift in 2016. It just loves to rev and it encourages you to push it harder and harder through every corner. It is just such a riot. This motor's only shortcoming is refinement and up against our sound testing equipment, it proved to be the loudest. But frankly, I was having too much fun to care. I could keep driving the Beamer all day, but I thought it was best instead to park up and try and arrive at a conclusion. Now I told you at the start that this would be a grudge match, right? And I wasn't kidding. These three have been at each other's throats since the beginning of time. And every time a new version of any of these cars is launched, it tries to outdo the others. The BMW, generationally, it is actually the oldest of this bunch. And unfortunately, it's starting to look and feel that way. Yet, it's got its fundamentals of luxury just right, space and comfort. And if you like driving yourself, it remains the pick of the lot. The C-Class, well, that's just a mini S-Class, isn't it? With its regal looks and its sumptuous interior. It's not without its flaws, especially in the areas of the back seat and ride comfort. But still, we couldn't blame you if you picked one. And if you do, we would recommend shelling out for this 250D version. But really, it seems that Audi has studied its two competitors very closely and is taking swipes at them exactly where it matters. It might not be quite as nice to drive as either of them, but it gets all the other luxury fundamentals just right. It's spacious, it's comfortable, it's loaded with the latest tech, and above all else, it is super, super refined. And that's why in this battle of the luxury bantamweight German sedans, the A4 emerges with the belt. I can't wait for the next round. <laughs>